Okay, guys, welcome. I'm Bill Yaden from John Don. We're right over there in that booth. And today, what we're going to talk about for the next five hours. Actually, they gave me about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So I'm supposed to tell you everything I know about upholstery cleaning in that amount of time. So I decided what I was going to tell you is all the things you should not do and things you should be aware of, okay? Do all of you clean upholstery right now? No, you do not? Okay. You do? You guys clean upholstery? Number one, let's talk about that bottom thing right there where it says waiver of care, custody, and control. What that really means is that if you started a carpet cleaning business or anything other type of business, you probably got insurance and your insurance man told you you got everything you Right? And the problem is, you don't. They told you you have everything you need until you mess up that sofa, and then they're going to tell you, well, were you working on it? You say, that's how it happened. And so what they're going to say is, well, I'm sorry, you're a professional, you shouldn't have done that, and so you're not covered. And so that's part of the problem here. You want what's called a waiver of care, custody, control, so anything that's under your care, custody, and control, you are covered for. That's what the waiver means. So in other words, if I'm cleaning carpet and I hit a base and it knocks over water onto this sofa and ruins the sofa, I am covered for it because I wasn't working on it. But if I was working on it, I'm not covered. So that's what you need. And that's why I put that on there. As a matter of fact, it's also on the second slide. So that's why I think it's so important. How much more does it make? I would say it's probably going to, everybody's different on insurance, probably another 15 to 20%. But if you have a $5,000 sofa, whatever it costs you to get the waiver is well worth it, right? So that's what you want to check for anything else that you're working on, right? So when you're looking at this, basically what you're talking about is, is that the type of sofa that you would feel comfortable going in and cleaning? No. But, I mean, if you were prepared and if it was in good shape, you could do this pretty easily, right? but you have to know what you're doing. Now, let me look at a couple things here that are gonna be different in upholstery cleaning that are different from carpet. When you look, number one, carpet versus fabric. You go into a home, a new home, on a standard home, not some rich, rich place, and almost everybody will have the same carpet, right? They'll all have beige, cut piles, stain master carpet. Right, so the person, the woman comes in and says, I need my home to look different from all the other homes in this block. And how do I do that? Why? Well, buy unique furniture. Unique furniture usually means it's not going to be synthetic. It's going to be cottons. It's going to be silks. It's going to be moirés. It's going to be all these words that you never heard of before, right? And so that right off the bat. Second thing is how thick is carpet versus a fabric? Well, carpet's probably going to be somewhere around that thick, right? A fabric is your shirt. That's all it is. So, I mean, it's not going to be that much different. So can we use the same types of products? No. If I'm using a carpet cleaning pre-spray, which a lot of people said, why can't I just use the same thing that I'm going to use on the carpet? Well, because number one, for the reason we just said, number one, it's thicker. Number two is it's probably, if it's upholstery, it's probably going to be a natural fiber, right? Which means we're going to change the pH. Also, when I'm using a carpet pre-spray, I have a lot of wetting agents to penetrate down into the carpeting to get to that primary backing to be able to get the soil and contaminants that are in there. If I use that, that amount of wetting agents into a thin fabric, I'm going right on through into the cushion, all right? Now, the perception also is that the people always say, you know, if it costs a lot of money, then it must be easy to clean. And that's the same thing as saying, if I drive a Marati, Maserati and Al drives a Chevy pickup truck, when we go to get our oil changed, I bet it's not going to cost the same amount of money. Right? Just because something costs a lot of money does not say that it maintains well. If you go down to the Shaw booth and you see something where they got viscose carpet or something, you're going to know that if you just look at it wrong, it's just going to turn into crap. Right? So that's a big issue that you're dealing with. So the pre-inspection and communication is the most important thing that we're actually going to talk about at this point in time. Pre-inspection. Looking at all the things on that sofa that the customer has not really looked at because they don't look at it really strongly until they actually go through and say, oh, it's all done. Uh, what about that there? They say, well, that was there before. But if you didn't tell them that, it wasn't there before. It doesn't matter whether it was or not. So I've got to, I would involve that person in the, in the inspection and then communicate and set the level of their, what they believe it's gonna do. I wanna set the level of expectations so that I can meet or beat them, right? I don't want to say, oh, heck yeah, it's all going to come out. 
And then when it doesn't, I'm a bozo, right? So that's the whole problem. So your key thing as a technician, the responsibility for you is to get it as clean as possible without affecting the color or the texture. Now there are, especially in upholstery, there's a lot of fabrics you're not going to be able to do anything with. But that's where you get into it, and that's where you set your level of pre-communication. So can so, you tell them, I don't think I can do this? Yeah, there's some they're just going to do. I call it the Michael Jackson, moonwalk right on out of here. Right. Because the idea here is that it, it just, I can't do it. If you go to the doctor and you got a cold, when you leave that doctor's office, you still going to have a cold? Oh, yeah. Is he still going to charge you? Oh, yeah. What, what's different about them from us? Because they wear a white jacket? We can wear a white jacket. I could bring in a little set scope. I could bring in a little microscope and look down at that fabric and go, ooh. Yeah. Kind of like when the doctor starts listening to you and he goes, ooh. It's all in the ooh. It's, a, it's all how we do it, right? So failure to communicate. What we have here is failure to communicate. Now, a lot of people talk about the famous cleaning codes. When you flip that cushion off the sofa and you look at that cleaning code that's right down there by the, the store label, what we really have now is the fact that it's just going to be, it's going to say SWX or SW. Now, S just means that it's solvent clean versus water clean. Now, do you know who puts those tags on? It's the person who is shipping out of the warehouse. So in other words, I get a little order, and uh, I ask Al. I say, Al, give me a couple of S tags. Al says, we're out of S tags. Well, give me a W tag. I don't care. <laughs> so that's why you get a love seat. It's got an S, and you've got a sofa that's a W, and they're the same thing. And you have to explain it to the customer. Right? So, so that's why those really don't mean anything. And here's the biggest thing that I can tell you about the pre-inspection, is that when I ask somebody, it's usually after they've already damaged the sofa, they call me up to help, say, can you fix it? I'll say, tell me, what's the fiber content? And they'll go, uh, um, hold on. And they look and they go, it says it's 100% uh, polyurethane. And I go, no, that's the foam. And here's the whole thing that people don't realize. You know that at home, if you have a mattress on your bed, there's this tag that says, do not remove this tag under the penalty of law, right? Well, it's the same thing on there. It's an old, century-old textile act that says that you have to know what's inside of it. You have to know what they put in here for stuffing, whether it's going to be a sofa, a chair, this, or your mattress. It's the same thing. And it doesn't mean anything. It's what's inside. It has nothing to do with the fabric. Right? So you have to test the fabric. We do that a couple different ways. There's a tag that I'm talking about. If you look on here, it's just going to say, you know, it's got uh, the seat cushions. It says polyurethane, right? Polyurethane is the cushion. We're not cleaning the cushion, right? We need to know what it is. The only way you're going to know what it is is by doing a burn test, and then you're going to do a color fastness test. Those are the two things that we worry about. So here's my color fastness test. I'm going to take the strongest chemical that I'm going to use by pH, right? Remember that an upholstery cleaning product should be closer to neutral, not like a pre-spray that we can go up to 10 and still be legit, right? So I need to do that. I'm going to spray that white towel, I'm going to clamp that on, and then I'm going to do my whole inspection and work from there. So we have to do the burn test. Now I figure these two guys probably know more about burn tests than anybody else that we deal with. So, the whole idea is all I'm going to do is take a snip. I'm going to take a cushion, say a cushion basically like this, and I'm just going to unzip this cushion right here. Inside of that zipper is going to actually be a doubled over fabric, right? So that means that I can test that, and if it bleeds, there's no big deal. It's inside here, and I'm just going to zip it back up. I can't do it like putting it on the top here and go, oh, yeah, bled. <laughs> Let's just flip it over. Don't worry about that, right? So that's not a big deal. So, pardon me? Yeah, yeah, basically, let's see. Now, this is another thing I would teach in class. If I start to unzip this and it's doing this and I can't get it done, hand it to the customer. Don't you break the zipper. Zippers are cheap these days. So when you unzip this, you can see that right here. See this part right here? It's doubled over, right? It's doubled over there, so I can spray this pretty heavily with my strongest pH product, put a, put a, a cotton towel of any sort, clamp it on there, set it off to the side, and, and go from there. Now I'm going to do my burn test from the same area, asking the customer, of course, first. I'm just going to snip that same area right next to that with their permission, 
and then I just take a, a butane lighter. I don't want matches because they give off an odor, and I'm going to burn it. Now, there's, we could give you, if we were doing a course and had a test, I'd have all these things. All I care about in the real world, did it melt and turn into a hard bead? Right? That means it's synthetic, and I got a lot of leeway. Right? If it turns into an ash, then I've got a natural fiber of some sort, and I got to really back everything down. And now I really want to check that color fastness, all right? Because that's the one that's probably going to do it. And I'll show you a couple of fabrics here that are going to be uh, really bad for that kind of stuff. While I got this open, though, one of the other things we're going to look at is make sure you look in here and that there's not going to be any kind of writing on there. The writing is usually what happens is that this manufacturer may make 40 different types of sofas and cushions. So each one of these may have a black magic marker and it says number 45. All that means is a number, number 45, right, that goes, goes into this type of a cushion. Right? And that's the idea there. So check that. Check for spills. A lot of times on thinner fabrics, like chairs like these, or you go into a bar or a restaurant, when they spill something on a lot of times it penetrates down through there and then the soil covers it up. And as soon as you put your pre spray on there, all of a sudden you get this big round spot. All right? So the whole idea is that all you've done is because the thin fabric, it wicked its way up. If it wasn't, if you didn't see it when you started, it'll go away when it dries. But now the first couple times that happens to you, you go, I hope it was right. <laughs> Otherwise, I got a real big problem here. But they will go back. So you're looking for those types of things that are in there, right? So we do the burn test. Here's the big four that we're worried about. I just call it BBST, right? Browning, bleeding, shrinkage, and textural problems. Textural problems is always going to be about velvets and other types of fabrics here. There's a, an example of browning. Now, normally, I, I would show you browning on a, on a upholstery, usually like a cotton, a linen, any of those types. This one was such a classic, though. In this particular case, this lady was in my class, and she told me that this lady had brought these Irish linen from her grandmother from Ireland, which meant there was a whole lot of emotional content and value. Right? And so in this particular case, she says, I don't think I can do anything. They, there was a water damage from the ceiling that came down and caused the damage. So she said, I can try sign and release. She put them into the bathtub with a browning agent, you know, on a, a low acid material that actually took care. And you can see it while, while the shading's a little different because of the lighting that they took there. You can see that all the browning drips are gone. Now, in that particular case, that woman was probably going to tell everybody in her neighborhood what a great company that was. You know, but you had to make sure that you were being very careful you know, on that one. So we talk about viscose, and if you've seen Lisa Wagner walking around here, right? She always has that little no viscose and rayon crap thing. Thank her, right? She's kind of she's kind of helping us all out. Viscose is a fancy word for rayon. And rayon is crappy. This goes to just expensive crappy, right? And they're making it into carpet, they're making it into rugs, and they're making it into fabrics. If you hear about this goes and there's anything on it, walk away. That's the best thing I can tell you to do. Microfibers. If you know how many calls I got every week about microfibers, and they'll say, Bill, how do you clean suede? I go, how do you know it's suede? It says, it says right here, it's ultra suede, or it's micro suede, or it's faux suede or some other god word in front of suede. If there's a word in front of suede, guess what it's not? It's not suede, right? If it's suede, they call it suede. <laughs> so it's all polyester, right? Polyester, anybody ever any trouble cleaning polyester fabrics? No, we work our clothing, half our clothing is polyester. And unfortunately, half the carpet today is polyester too, but that, that's a, a subject for another day. Right? So don't worry about that. Now, when you start hearing words that you don't hear every day, jacquard, right? You're, you see your antenna should come up and say, that sounds kind of risky. It is, right? One thing about jacquard, all it means is it's a type of weave. And if you go way back into the 1800s when it was designed, it's the same thing. It was designed with a punch hole. Remember the old player pianos, right, that had the punch cards? And how did we start computers? with punch cards. It's the same thing. What it was is all the strands would come down so they could have this special fabric that was called Jacquard because the man who invented it was Jacquard. What's his name? So the problem here is that almost always natural fibers, lots of cottons, lots of different types of things, almost always dark colors, right? And because of the way it's woven, it's always thicker. All those things add up to bleeding, right? So these are the type, how you identify it is that 
when you look on the front, see how the little bit of red that's on there, right? When you look at the back, see where all the rest of the red is? So I know people that actually try to clean around the red, thinking I'll just miss the red. No, it's going to go all the way across. When something bleeds in a jacquard, it bleeds across. And you know where it really bleeds? It's when you get something like a, a rounded top on the back of the sofa. When people are taking their hand tool and they go up real quick like this, right? when they get to here, they break the vacuum seal. And what happens now is all the solution you're bringing up at that point in time falls back in and you didn't get all that out. So the next day as it dries, you see this red line across there. So that's the same thing. Or on the arms when you have curved arms. So I mean, those are the things you have to get rid of. When you start hearing other words, brocade, brocatel, damage, all these things, as soon as the words sound fancy, you know, it's not like Herculon. <laughs> Herculon is like great, right? But nothing else. So just be careful. Start, the more it sounds strange, the more time you want to spend just investigating it, right? Here's a little bleeding. In this particular case, what happened, there was a water damage from above, right? But just a little bit. And what happened is it came down and it caught the corner of that cushion. But everybody kind of probably came down when they did the restoration job. They kind of felt the, the sofa said, oh, it's good, nothing happened here. Well, they didn't get that one little corner and because it's wet against a wet material, basically now you have this kind of like, it's not gonna dry. The longer something takes to dry, the more problems you're going to have especially when you have something that's a potential bleeder, right? So check these things out thoroughly. Now, I didn't bring any over, but they're over there in John Dunn's uh, booth. When, this is a dry cleaning machine, all right? Uh, they're not as popular as they once were. They're still great for drapes and still great for not getting yourself in trouble, but not everybody has a dry cleaning machine. So I like to go to what we call an acid dry foam, all right? And the acid dry foam basically is gonna do a couple of things. Number one, if you've ever dyed Easter eggs, you know that when you put the color in, the next thing you do is put vinegar in. What's vinegar? Acetic acid, all right? So it helps to set the dyes, helps to set the colors. That's part of it. Second thing is that the pH on that, or I already mentioned that, is acidic, but it's five to six, and it's a dry foam, which means that when you mix it up, you lather it up, and you come up with something that looks like a shaving cream. You can use either a horsehair brush, or I really like the natural sponges called sea sponges. Just keep squeezing that, squeezing it until you get that thick shaving cream like foam, right? And that's what you're gonna use there. Is it going to clean something that's really dirty? No, right? That's not your job. Your job, as we said on that first slide, is that clean it as well as you can, not affecting the color or texture. If it's just it's too bad or the fabric is too exotic, you can't do anything about it. But I have to work within my limitations. Now, this is just one of the things. When you go into a home, let's say you're gonna clean the carpet, but you look over and see something that's a beautiful piece, you can tell it's expensive, and it's in good shape. When do I wanna clean it? Now. <laughs> Not two years from now, after the cat's been peeing on it for the last three weeks, right? So just go with that. Go with something safe when you're looking at it. Pile weaves, we all know what a velvet is. Just remember, velvet is not a fiber. It is a fabric, it's a weave. It's how it was made. Same thing like corduroy. Even though it's not popular these days, it'll be back, just like everything else, right? Chenille is popular these days. They kind of call it the caterpillar weave. Those of you probably aren't old enough here, except, of course, with the one gentleman over here. I know he's real old, right? And his grandmother probably had a chenille bedspread on her bed, right? And the idea there is that that was that little bumpy thing, but it is a pile weave. Now, here's the most important thing about pile weaves, is that what you're gonna spend time on is vacuuming and grooming. The cleaning is just kinda like this little thing you did in between those two. And if you ever wanna look at a pile fabric, and I'd ask you to do this at your own home, just go home, take the vacuum hose off of your vacuum or your machine or whatever, put a little white towel over it, and just do a little vacuuming over the arms and the tops of that cushion. 10 seconds, right? Pull that, that towel off, you will have the most disgusting black circle you've ever seen. Right? I guarantee it even in your own homes, and we're in the cleaning business. So, you know, this is what you get when you go into these customers' homes. You can get these people, kind of like, Mr. Jones, have you had that clean before? It's a beautiful velvet. Say, so, no, do you think it needs it? That's, very de that's a very delicate question. That's why you say, would you mind if I did a little test? And in that particular case, then, you do that test, you don't say a word, lay the towel down, and just wait. And she's gonna say, ooh, that's horrible. And then you can let them off the hook real easily. Here's a Mr. Jones. 
I, when I first found out about that, I actually did it in my own home. Unfortunately, my wife was watching me when I did it, and I spent the whole weekend cleaning furniture in my house. So, you know, they'll go, oh, so that's not really out of the norm. No, it's not. You know, but the next question is always going to be, well, how much would it be? That's when we fold it, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, anything we do in this business, if it's clean, vacuuming, right? And don't don't start me on vacuuming, right? And just, yes, with a capital V, right? So, yes, right? And then the second part of that velvet and pile fabrics, always about grooming. If it is a natural fiber, and you all swore that you said you would test all your fibers now, right, before you clean them. If it's a natural fiber and it's a velvet, right, you want to, as soon as I clean this piece, I want to go ahead and take care of it right now and groom it. If I have two people working on this, I'm going to have one person, all they're doing is grooming, right? Because it's just like that old cotton bath towel. If it got wet and it kind of hung out in the wind, when you pick it up, and it's stiff, and that stiffness also is going to affect the way the light reflects off of that, and it's going to look terrible, all right? You can fix that. That's something you can fix. There's not, but you don't want to have to fix it. You want to take care of it when it's done. So using those tools, either one which works for you, one of the things also is drying. Anybody here do water damage, I presume? A few people? Yeah. So water damage, how do you set your fans? The well, 45 degrees, right? And the whole idea is the same thing. You do not, if this is my sofa, I do not want to put the fan out there blowing in because what's this moisture trying to do? Trying to come out, right? And I'm just blowing it right back in. I want to point that thing just like I'm doing a drying wall, bounce it off this thing and pull it out. The, this, let me probably, and I'm hitting this pretty quickly because I know I've got too much time, but this, when I clean my cushions first, which is usually when I'm going to clean first, they're usually the dirtiest, along with the, the, the uh, uh, arms. When I got these, I'm going to take these, TP them on either craft paper, plastic, not on the deck of the sofa, right? And I'm going to put a block in between these two, putting these right together, making a little TP, and then run my fan right through here like a tunnel, right? In about 15 minutes pretty dry. I'm going to flip this thing around, put the same foam uh, core in there, and do the same thing. And I'm working on this. By the time I'm done, these are probably good to go. But still, do not put them on the deck. I can guarantee that we replace more fabrics because of putting those on the deck. And the deck is the material underneath the sofa. Polished cotton. Too often people will have something that happens uh, Grandma goes on this cushion or something, they dump every product they have in the place, beat it into submission, right? And then it turns black after a while, so they go, oh, look at how horrible, they flip it over and go, ooh, look at how nice that looks. Well, it's because they never changed it in five years, right? You still got the arm covers underneath there, in the plastic bags, you know? So the, the idea is they go, oh, we can have somebody come and clean and make it all look like that. Yeah, if you go to the car, the rug fabric store, you can, but not by cleaning it. But what's gonna happen is when you clean it, they're going to say, hey, you took off all the shiny stuff. No, that shiny stuff is long gone. So part of your inspection there, I'm going to put a drip of water on the top of the worn area. It's going to soak right in. I'm going to go to the area that was never seen, put a drop on it. It'll sit there till tomorrow. Say, Mr. Jones, this is going to look like this. Same. Everything will be there. This one's not because it's already gone. One of the big things we have right now is having a little pH shift, and a lot of it has to do with the the fire retardancy that's on a lot of the down stuff cushions. You know, that's a big issue. When you get into that, you know, should always have some ammonia, always have some acetic acid of some sort uh, and to try and see which one you're going to. That's a lot more complex than what we have time for today. Just remember that older, older material are always going to have a lot of different things going on. Older fabrics are going to have metal buttons. Newer fabrics are always going to have plastic buttons. And so that's the difference. Make sure you've checked to see which is which. Fading. Sometimes these people think we can make it yellow again. No, no, no. no. It's long gone. It's kind of like the color of my hair. It's not coming back. So deteriorating foam. While you're checking this out, make sure that the foam has not gone to pot there. What happens now is as you're extracting, especially on a thin fabric, you're pulling up that gold powder that's underneath there, and you've got to leave a yellow discoloration on there. Shrinkage. When you shrink a sofa, you know you've been really need to go back to school and learn how to clean, right? But before you start the cleaning, all the four corners of the sofa and the skirt pin them together. Remember the rest of the sofa itself is actually being held under tension 
either by the construction or by the cushion and everything else. But down here on the skirts, it's not. There's nothing holding it tight. Right? I already talked about this. That was just how we take care of the, the uh, keeping it from bleeding onto the fabric itself. And that's pretty much what it is. Thank you very much.